Hello everyone, welcome to the five elements to relationships. This is presented by Lamp Acu Wellness Foundation Inc. as part of its continuing Lamp Lecture series. Essential to the very concept of the five elements are the various interactions among them. Different philosophers stress different relationships among the five elements. The five-phase theory or the five-element theory is based on the premise that everything in the universe is created by chi or is a manifestation of chi. As we have learned in our earlier lectures on yin and yang, chi is created by the interaction of yin and yang. Chi is something other and more than just pure energy. Everything in the universe consists of chi. The theory of the five elements has as its founding premise that there are five fundamental resonances of chi in the universe. This means that things that have the same resonance will be related to each other. They are manifestations of the same energy. The universe is conceived as having five basic energies or resonances. These are known as the five phases, which are water, wood, fire, earth, and metal. It is important to remember that things are not arbitrarily divided into different phases. Objects, processes, colors, climates, etc. are just manifestations of chi, which have similar energetic qualities. This is the reason that these things are classified as being of the same phase. They resonate with each other. The wood phase is not the green color. But the green color resonates with other things around us and in the universe, which can be classified as being an aspect of the wood phase. The five phases are not static. They are in a state of constant change, as for example, the seasons are. Spring follows winter, which is succeeded by summer. The phases also have a dynamic relationship with each other. This is not dissimilar to the relationship between yin and yang. The five phases are mutually dependent on each other. They control each other and they create each other. Water creates or is followed by wood, which creates or is followed by fire and so on. At the same time, water extinguishes fire, fire burns wood, etc. The five phases can be understood as being a refinement or development of yin-yang theory. The five phases can be viewed as an explanation of the way in which yin and yang transform into and control each other. The cycle in which the five phases follow or create each other is called the Shang cycle. It can be translated into English as the generating or creative cycle. Some call the Shang cycle the nourishing cycle. The relationship between the two phases that follow each other in the Shang cycle is described as a mother and son relationship. The first phase is mother to the phase that follows it in the Shang cycle. For example, water is mother of wood. The generating cycle can be seen everywhere, not only in seasons as described above, but also in all aspects of life. Night follows the evening and then is itself followed by the morning. We also see it in a life cycle where a plant sprouts from a seed and then blossoms and this then turns to fruit and finally to seed. People start their lives as helpless individuals, unable to walk, fed by others and incapable of controlling their urination only to end up in the same condition again 80 years later. The Shang cycle, as described here, is nothing other than the principle of yin and yang transforming into each other. The Shang cycle is the process of yang growing until it reaches its zenith and then fading again as yin grows in strength. The Ku cycle. The Shang cycle is not the only cycle or dynamic relationship between the phases. All of the principles of yin and yang can be seen in the relationships of the five phases. 
Water and fire, for example, are each other's opposites and they control each other. But at the same time, they are mutually dependent on each other. The metal phase's energetic dynamic is inward or centripetal, whilst the wood phase is expanding or centrifugal. Phases can only exist by virtue of each other, whilst simultaneously balancing and controlling each other. The way in which the phases control each other is known as the controlling cycle or cool cycle. In this cycle, the different phases keep each other in check, or, more correctly, in balance. Fire controls metal, which in turn controls wood. Wood controls earth, and earth controls water, which again controls fire. The combination of Shang and Ku cycles results in a finely tuned and balanced system, where one phase nourishes the next phase, but the phase that it nourishes controls a third phase, which, for its part, controls the first phase. Imbalance can, however, arise. A phase may be too dominant and can oppress another phase. Instead of keeping the second phase in check and having a balancing effect, it oppresses and thereby weakens the following phase in the coup cycle. A phase may also be too weak so that it is no longer capable of controlling the next phase in the cool cycle or the phase that it should be controlling has become too strong. The end result of both situations is a phase that no longer controls the next phase in the cool cycle, but instead is insulted by a phase that should be subservient to it. There is a reversal of the relationships in the cool cycle. An example could be that if water is weak, instead of controlling fire, fire starts to dominate water instead. These relationships can be used to diagnose and treat the body when the body has become energetically imbalanced, resulting in physical and emotional symptoms. Either overstrength of the acting part or overweakness of the part acted upon can result in the acting abnormality. The sequence of overaction, which is the same as that of interaction, is wood overacts on earth, earth on water, water on fire, fire on metal, metal on wood. The reasons for overaction involve the following two aspects. One, one element of the five is overstrong itself, leading to excessive control of the controlled element, which induces the weakness of the controlled element, resulting in an abnormality of promotion and restriction among the five elements. For instance, the overstrength of wood results in overacting on earth, thus an insufficiency of earth results, described as wood overacts on earth. Number two, if one element of the five is itself weak, in corresponding to its normal controlling element, the interaction will seem to be stronger, thus this element will even be weaker. For instance, wood itself is not strong enough in itself to over-control, and its acting on earth may be still within normal limits. But if earth itself is insufficient, the interaction between wood and earth will become relatively strong, leading to even more insufficiency of earth, termed as wood overacts on earth, when earth is deficient. Over-restraint or over-controlling. This refers to excessive restraint. Under normal circumstances, the restraint relationship has definite limits. If restraint exceeds these limits, then abnormal reactions ensue. This is known as over-controlling or over-restraint. Two circumstances can give rise to over-restraint. Excessive forcefulness of the restraining element and marked weakness of the restraint element. For example, normally wood restrains earth, but if wood is especially strong or if earth is especially weak, then wood can over restrain earth. Over restraint is the use of strength to oppress the weak. The order of over restraint is the same as that of restraint. It should be noted, however, that Restraint and over-restraint are quite different. Restraint is a relationship under normal conditions, whereas over-restraint or over-controlling is an abnormal relationship of excess 
that obtains when the normal relationship has been disrupted. In the human body, the former is physiology and the latter pathology. One element of the five counteracts on its controlling element. The sequence of counteraction is wood counteracts on metal, metal on fire, fire on water, water on earth, earth on wood. For instance, wood should be controlled by metal. If wood is especially strong, it will be not only fail to be controlled by metal, but on the contrary, it counteracts on metal. This is termed wood counteracts on metal. If metal is quite weak, it will not only fail to control wood, but will be counteracted by wood, which is described as metal is counteracted by wood when it is weak. Another term for insulting cycle is the counter-restraint. This refers to the reversal of restraint, in which the suppress turns about and suppresses its suppressor. This too can arise in two circumstances. In one, the restraint element is too strong. For example, normally metal restrains wood. If wood is too strong, metal is unable to restrain it and wood can reverse the process and restrain metal instead. In the other, the restraining element is too weak. For example, normally wood restrains earth. If wood is too weak, earth can reverse the process and restrain wood instead. Hence, counter-restraint is the exploitation of weakness in the element's normal suppressor in order to suppress it. The order of counter-restraint is the reverse of restraint. Over-restraint and counter-restraint are abnormal relationships among the five elements. They are connected insofar as whenever over-restraint occurs, there is also counter-restraint. Similarly, whenever counter-restraint occurs, there is also over-restraint. The usefulness of these concepts can be illustrated with a clinical example. Consider the common clinical condition of bronchiectasis of the lung. It often occurs when stagnant liver chi turns into fire, scorching the lung and leading to hemoptysis. This is known as wood fire impairing metal or excessive wood counter restraining metal. If accumulation of liver chi impairs the functions of the spleen and stomach, in digestion and absorption, it is known as accumulated wood over restraining earth. Another example is hypertension due to dampness heat. Dampness heat encumbering the spleen often creates this function of liver chi and hyperactivity of liver yang. This is known as obstructed earth counter restraining wood. The Shang cycle is also known as the generation cycle. The concept of generation contains the ideas of production, stimulation, and augmentation. The cyclic sequence of generation is as follows. Wood generates fire, fire generates earth, earth generates metal, metal generates water, and water generates wood. There are two aspects to the relationship of uh, generation for each element. Those of being generated, and of generating. The generating element is the mother of the generated element, and the generated element is the child of the generating element. Hence, the generation relationship is also known as the mother-child relationship. Take fire, for example. Fire generates earth. Thus, fire is the mother of earth, and earth is the child of fire. The other four elements follow this example. Let's talk about restraint or control. The concept of uh, restraint contains the ideas of restriction, check, and inhibition. The cyclic sequence of restraint is as follows. Wood restrains earth, earth restrains water, water restrains fire, fire restrains metal, and metal restrains wood. As for generation, 
there are two aspects to the relationship of restraint for each element, those of being restrained and of restraining. The restraining element is the suppressor, and the restrained element is the suppressed. Hence, the relationship of restraint is also known as the suppressor-suppressed relationship. Again, take fire for example. Fire is the suppressor of metal, and metal is the suppressed of fire. In the theory of the five elements, each element has a direct relationship with all the other elements. For example, earth is the mother of metal and the child of fire, and at the same time, it is the suppressor of water and the suppressed of wood. It should be noted that in Chinese medicine, the two relationships of generation and of restraint are inseparable. Without generation, things cannot be born and cannot develop. Without restraint, things can grow without limit and cause harm. It is necessary to have both generation and restraint in order to maintain harmonious relationships between things and to assure their normal development and change. The course of generation and restraint is also the course of the waxing and waning of all things, in which the old balance and coordination break down and the new balance and coordination are reached through the self-adjustment of the generation and restraint relationships. The course of this cycle of balance, imbalance, balance gives impetus to the ceaseless development and change of things. Hence, the essence of the theory of the five elements is the maintenance of the normal regularity of generation and restraint among the elements. The system of correspondences is an important part of the five element theory. This system is typical of the ancient Chinese thought, linking many different phenomena and qualities within the microcosm and macrocosm under the aegis of a certain element. The ancient Chinese philosophers saw the link among apparently unrelated phenomena as a kind of resonance among them. Various different phenomena would be unified by an indefinable common quality, much as two strings would vibrate in unison. One of the most typical aspects of Chinese medicine is the common resonance among phenomena in nature and in the human body. Some of these correspondences are commonly verified and experienced all the time in clinical practice. Some may seem far-fetched, but the feeling remains that there is a profound wisdom underlying all of them, which is at times unfathomable. However they were determined, there are many sets of correspondences for each of the five elements. The correlation between the elements and seasons is a very immediate and obvious one, and so is that with the cardinal directions. These sets of correspondences, especially those related to the human body, show how the organs and the related phenomena form an inseparable and integrated whole. Thus, wood corresponds to the liver, eye, sinews, shouting, green, anger, wheat, spring, and birth. All these phenomena are related and all pertain to the element of wood. A special mention should be made of the fire element. The two organs belonging to fire are the heart, yin, and the small intestine, yang. However, the fire element corresponds also to two other organs, namely the pericardium, which is yin, and the triple burner, which is yang. These two organs together are known as the minister fire, while the heart and small intestine pertain to the emperor fire. This is because the pericardium and triple burner are considered to have the role of serving and protecting the heart in a way similar to a prime minister's in ancient China, following of the orders of the emperor. Thank you very much for your attention and hope to see you on our next videos.